بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين الحمد لله العلي القدير أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأستعين به وأتوب إليه وأستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله السميع البصير يعز من يشاء ويذل من يشاء وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين وقائد المجاهدين وإمام الغر المحجلين بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله يا من بك فتحت آذانا صما وأعينا عميا وقلوبا غلفا أما بعد cause for the fall of Andalus was the Muslim scholars at that time and watch and listen carefully brothers and sisters because what the scholars were doing at that time is no different in fact is even less than what the scholars nowadays are doing to the Muslim Ummah. The scholars abandoned their duty. They were too busy with personal affairs to the extent that Muslim cities and neighborhoods and big regions were falling constantly to the Christians, to the Christian Kafir, and the scholar would not say one word about this in the mosque. Imagine entire cities are falling, thousands and hundreds of thousands of Muslims are killed, thousands of women are raped, and when the scholars go to the mosque for the Jummah khutbah, they talk about other things and they do not mention one word about the falling cities. They have completely abandoned their duties. The scholars got tangled up in minor issues and left major ones. Scholars no longer talked about jihad. Scholars no longer talked about al-wala wal bara just like it is today. That was repeated shortly after that. We are all aware of the time when the French invaded Syria. Now, you may not believe this, but it is true. When the French invaded Syria, the scholars, instead of talking about the issue of the French occupation and how to deal with it, they were busy debating whether or not a man belongs to the Shafi'i Madhab could marry a woman belongs to the Hanafi Madhab. Can you believe this? The whole country is under the siege and occupation of the Kafir French and the major scholars of the country were trying to decide on an issue can a Shafi'i man marry a Hanafi woman? Scholars in Muslim countries these days, they have abandoned their duties, the majority of them. In one Arab country, while citizens were being tortured and killed, some of them, those who were asking for the return of Sharia, they were killed and tortured and their families were harassed by the apostated leader and the scholars were debating another minor issue that minor issue is this 
if the woman grows hair on her face, should, be, should she shave it or not? What a shame on you, scholars. What a shame on you. I say this to you. Death is near and you too will face death. What are you going to say to Allah when he asks you about the knowledge you have and you have concealed it from the Ummah? You have concealed the knowledge from the Ummah, from the Muslims. Listen to what Allah says. What lo alayhim naba alladhi ataynahu ayatina fan salaka minha fa adbahu shaytan fa kana min al ghawin. Walau shi'na la rafana hu biha walakinahu akhlada ila al ardu wa tabahawa fa mafaluhu kamafal il kalb in tahmil alayhi al hath. أو تتركه يلهث ذلك مثل القوم الذين كذبوا بآياتنا فاقصص القصص لعلهم يتفكرون. Relate to them the story of the man to whom we sent over signs. But he passed by. So Satan followed him up. And he went astray. Listen to what Allah says. All oh, you scholars now, listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah 2 verse 159. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أولئك يلعنهم الله ويلعنهم اللاعنون. Those who conceal the clear signs we have sent down and the guidance after we have made it clear for the people in the book. On them shall be Allah. On them shall be Allah's curse and the curse of those entitled to curse. Listen to Allah again in Surah Baqarah 2, verse 174. That's Surah 2, verse 174. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا أُولَئِكَ مَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ إِلَّا النَّارِ وَلَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ those who conceal Allah's revelations in the book and purchase for them a miserable prophet, they swallow into themselves not but fire. Allah, Allah will not address them the day of judgment. And he will not talk to them and they will face a severe punishment. Now, some scholars these days have committed very serious crimes and they need to repent and they need to do it now. This question is Sheikh Bin Baz, how could you with all the knowledge that Allah gave you, how could you know him quite well al wala wal bara how could you know in quite well what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu about no two religion should exist on the Holy Land? How could you with all this, you pass a fatwa allowing 500,000 U.S. troops to enter the, per the Arabian Peninsula? How can you justify that? How can you justify that? How are you going to answer Allah when he asks you about this? Aren't you the same person? Aren't you the same person who gave a fatwa to a Muslim man when he asked you about whether or not it is right to get 
a servant, a non-Muslim servant, because you couldn't get a Muslim one, and you were very adamant about telling him, you cannot use a non-Muslim for anything, and it is sin, and Allah will not approve of that. How could you advise a Muslim man not to get a non-Muslim servant in the same time you advise your master, yes, your master, King Fat, to accept 500,000 kafir with all the filth, with all the paganism, with all the destruction that, that come with them to the entire Muslim ummah. Do we have an answer from you? Of obviously no at this time. To the other scholar, Sheikh Tantawi, may Allah curse you forever because you are a kafir. You are the one who knows exactly that President Mubarak, your master, President Mubarak, rules by the Democratic Party, does not rule by Sharia. You know that he tortured Muslims. You know he killed them. And you get up on TV and make halal haram. And you know what the Minister of Information is doing in corrupting the Muslim minds of our children in Egypt. And you know the programs on TV and you say nothing. Not only that, but you advocate bridging the gap between Muslims and Christians. And you know quite well that there is no such a thing as bridging the gap because Muslims are guided by Allah and the Christians are totally misguided and they are pagans, they are kafir, they need to come to Islam. Islam doesn't have to bridge any gap between them and between Muslims and Christians. Those scholars need to think hard about the questions Allah will ask them about the knowledge they conceal and the knowledge they had and did not deliver it to the people and concealed it from the people. I say to all these scholars, scholars of Islam, I say to all of you, how come no one is talking about jihad? How come no one is talking about al-wala wal bara? How come none of you is making takfir on your leaders, your masters? You know they're not abiding by Sharia. You're no, you know that they're not implementing Sharia. What excuse do you have for concealing the knowledge from them or from the rest of the Muslims? What excuse do you have for not standing up and real, rallying Muslims around you to take down any government that is not implementing the Sharia of Allah. What excuse do you have for going on the member and talking about every little thing and a big thing except jihad against the enemies of Allah? And the enemies of Allah start right in your back door. The enemies of Allah are not far from you. The enemies of Allah are your masters. Are you worried about your salary? Are you worried about your position? Are you worried about your family? None of that will help you on judgment day. When you go to the grave, you will be all alone with your deeds only. Nobody will be able to save you. You must know that you are doing your fellow Muslims a big disservice. You must know that you are misleading millions of Muslims and you will carry the burden at the Day of Judgment. Now, you know by abandoning the Sharia and you know by going against jihad or not saying anything about jihad, you're actually rejecting 
what Allah commanded us to do in the Holy Quran and you're actually rejecting what the Prophet وسلم, said. Let me remind you, all of you, what Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, Surah 4, verse 115. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقُ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا It is you, it is you scholars that on your own have elected not to talk about jihad, have elected not to talk about wala wal bara have elected not to make takfir on a kafir leader or kafir leaders, you have elected to deviate and disobey the Prophet. Allah says again in Surah 4, in Surah 4, verse 115, if anyone contends with the messenger, even after guidance has been plainly conveyed to him, and follows a path other than that becoming to men of faith we shall leave him in the path he has chosen and land him in hell fire what an evil refuge that is that's what Allah tells you you scholars because you know the truth and you conceal the truth and you know what you're supposed to do and you fail to perform your duties. Now, to you and to your leaders, to all of you and your leaders, when I say all of you, I mean those of you who elect to conceal the knowledge, those of you who elect not to talk about jihad, who elect not to demand the implementation of Sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, Surah 7, verse 146. This is directed to the leaders and the scholars. سَأَصْرِفُ عَنْ آيَاتِيَ الَّذِينَ يَتَكَبَّرُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَإِنْ يَرَوْ كُلَّ آيَةٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَا وَإِنْ يَرَوْا سَبِيلَ الرُّشْدِ لَا يَتَّخِذُوهُ سَبِيلًا وَإِنْ يَرَوْا سَبِيلَ الْغَيِّ يَتَّخِذُوهُ سَبِيلًا ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَكَانُوا عَنْهَا غَافِلِينَ Those who behave arrogantly on earth Obviously leaders and you guys are all behaving arrogantly You torture Muslims You think nobody knows anything and you know everything those who, be, who behave arrogantly on the earth in defiance of the right. Then will I turn away from my sign? They will not believe in them. And if they see the way of right conduct, they will not adopt it. If they see the way of the right conduct, they will not adopt it the way but if they see the way of error that is the way they will adopt for they have neglected our signs and failed to take warning from them that's you one more time those who behave arrogantly on earth in defiance of right then will I turn away from my sign, they will not believe in them, and if they, see the, if they see the way of right conduct, they will not adopt it. The way, but if they see the way of error, that is the way they will adopt, for they have neglected our signs and failed to take warning from them I say you again I say to you again you ought to repent and ought to do it now 
Now I say again to you scholars and to the average person as well, because some of you may say, well, I can't help it. The leader will not stand for any talk about jihad. The leader will not stand for any talk about al-wala al bara The leader will not stand for any talk about implementing Sharia. And I only work for him, or I only work for somebody. I can't do much, or I can't do anything. I say to you, read Surah Baqarah, Ayah 166, Surah 2, 166. إذ تبرأ الذين اتبعوا من الذين اتبعوا ورأوا العذاب وتقطعت بهم الأسباب Then would those who are followed clear themselves of those who follow them One more time Those who are followed will clear themselves from those who followed them They will see the shatisment and all relations between them would be cut off. In other words, in the Day of Judgment, you, the scholar, or any average person, cannot use this as an excuse, meaning cannot say, well, my boss wanted me to do this, or the president of the country wanted me not to talk about this. This will not be accepted. Next ayah, 167, same surah, Al-Baqarah, 2, 167. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً فَنَتَبَرَّأُ مِنْهُمْ كَمَا تَبَرَّأُوا مِنَّا كَذَلِكَ يُرِيهُمُ اللَّهُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ حَسَرَاتٍ عَلَيْهِمْ وَمَا هُمْ بِخَارِجِينَ مِنَ النَّارِ Listen carefully because this actually gives you your actual faith. Hellfire. Here, here we go. And those who followed, meaning you, those who followed would say, if only we had one more chance, we would clear ourselves of them as they have cleared themselves of us. Thus, will Allah, then will Allah show them the fruit of their deeds as nothing but regrets nor will they be saved and they will abide in hellfire. So again, if you just even ask for another chance to clear yourself from your master or your leader you would be told by Allah that nothing is going to work for you today. You will not come out of hell fire. Now, let's go to Surah An-Nisa. 4, Surah 4, verse 76. Any leader has people working for him and has army working for him, executing his orders. If that leader is an apostate, if that leader is a kafir, occasionally you may hear from the soldiers or from people working for him saying again, we can't help it. We follow orders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ والذين كفروا يقاتلون في سبيل الطاغوت فقاتلوا أولياء الشيطان إن كيد الشيطان كان ضعيفا سورة النساء 4 verse 76 الذين آمنوا يقاتلون في سبيل الله Those who believe, the believers will fight and will wage jihad for Allah in the name of Allah وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those kafir will fight alongside of the taghut. Now if you look at the leader, it is not going to be hard for you, scholars or the average person, to determine that the leader is kafir. As we said before, all of them 
except one system, and that's the Afghani system. All other leaders are kafir, have apostated from Islam because they're not implementing Sharia and they are killing and oppressing Muslims. So if the leader is kafir, then he's a taghut. Then all his army or anybody in his army fighting with him, alongside with him, anybody works for him, anybody advancing the, the uh, orders of this leader is considered kafir according to this ayah. Those kafirs will fight alongside the taghut. And then Allah orders the Muslim, the true believer, فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ He describes you as the friends and the allies of the shaitan. You are being labeled here in this ayah. Surah An-Nisa, you scholars and the average person, if you stand still, if you don't rise up, if you don't say anything about what's right and what's wrong, you are a friend and ally of the shaitan and you should be fought and you should be killed and it is coming to you unless you repent and you do it now. I say to you again, leaders and scholars, especially leaders, because you may think, because you have the army working for you, you have the security forces working for you, doing whatever you want, killing, torturing people left and right, putting people in prison for no reason other than speaking the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses you and talk to you or talk about you in Surah Ibrahim 14 verse 42 and 43. إنما يؤخرهم ليوم تشخص فيه الأبصار مهطعين مقنعي رؤوسهم لا يرتد إليهم طرفهم وأفئدتهم هواء Allah is not unaware of those who do wrong He only gives them respite till judgment day On that day their eyes will fixedly store their eyes will fixedly stare in horror. They running forward with necks outstretched. They will keep running forward. Their neck will be, will be upright, outstretched. Their head uplifted. Their gaze returning not toward them and their hearts are gapping void. That's the state or the status of those who are doing wrong and Allah is saying that he is totally aware of what you're doing and what will happen to you on judgment day is clearly described on uh, in ayah 42 and 43 of uh, Surah Ibrahim Surah 14, 14, 42, and 43. I say this also to the widows, and to the orphans, and to the wives, and to the parents who have lost their beloved one, to the torture and arrogance of an oppressive leader. He is totally aware of what they're doing. Punishment is coming to them. Punishment is not going to be waived for them.